show you a really fantastic recipe for a braised octopus in a tomato sauce and I'm gonna all tie it in together with some rigatoni. This recipe here is a uh, very traditional kind of Greek recipe. Goes back uh, many, 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 many years and decades and I don't know how long. I'm using baby octopus. I like the, the tenderness and the flavor of the babies, but you can use whatever you like. Look at these little gems. I'm using about half a pound. Aren't these like the cutest little things? Ooh, you can even wear them for earrings. Like they're so cute. So I got about half a pound here of these uh, little guys here, and you don't need much because they definitely pack a big flavor. So for these, uh, the way it's going to go, very simply, I'm going to take them, I'm going to lop off the head here, just like that, and cut that in half. And what you're going to do is, the bottom parts here, you're going to cut into fours. You don't want these huge pieces of the octopus. You want nice, tender, sweet, little juicy parts. Now, if you find some that still have their beaks on, no big deal, or the little mouth, just uh, clean it up, not a big deal. It doesn't take much to do at all. All right, the next thing, I'm gonna take half a cup of my Greek extra virgin olive oil. You wanna go a little heavier on the olive oil here. And the first step to cooking this, and there's that sizzle baby, is actually browning your octopus. Octopus is one of these things that's kind of tricky. If you don't do it right, it's going to become really um, chewy and tough and gross. And you don't want to be having guests over or even for yourself. And, uh, and you're, you know, chewing on this thing. Not a good thing at all. So let me just see what's going on here. Let me, I'll grab this. And just give these a little stir up in here. Now you're going for a high heat. You almost want to... Uh, sear these and it, this part here won't take long it'll just take literally like a few minutes not a big deal and while that's going on we have other things to do as well the next thing is our onion and for this I'm literally using one onion and again you could either chop it you could uh, you can slice it you can do whatever you like not a big deal at all for me for this recipe here, because I'm going to be using like a rigatone or a, or a shorter kind of pasta, you can do a coarser chop. It's, it'll, it'll totally work, totally blend in fine. There, that's my onion chopped. And already these are packing quite the punch here. I love it. Absolutely love it. Take your onion, just put it in there. Let that start doing its thing. Along with this, I'm going to use two cloves of garlic. Now, I'm just going to use like a very simple grater and just grate the garlic. If you've got a crusher, you can crush it. If you're going to slice it, you can slice it or chop it up with a knife. I'm just feeling lazy today, so I'm just going to do it this way. And that's done. Make sure you get all this goodness here as well. Also, at this stage, I'm going to throw in one little itty-bitty clove. One clove in this is going to add such a punch. So as this is going now, I want to season it up. I'm going to take some salt. Very easy. I'm going to take a little pepper as well. I mean, pepper makes everything better. It's like butter. So that goes in there like that optional red chili flakes. I like to add a little bit of heat, kick it up a little bit, so you can go as much or as little as you like or not at all. Totally, totally fine. The next part of this is half a teaspoon of cinnamon. So you could either use half a teaspoon or half a stick. Just very, a very small amount. Just tap it in there. That's perfect. Just like that. And like most of my recipes, I add in my spices, my dry spices, pretty much at this stage of the game because I want them to release their maximum flavors. 
and their oils, once they get released, is that flavor. So that's perfect right there, coming along really nice. Now, one tablespoon of tomato paste. You need this, you want to bring out a little bit of that rich decadence, and this is what's going to give it to you. So that's just going to go in there just like that. Perfect. Now, this will take like a minute or two just to kind of melt down and do its, uh, do its thing. So, I'm getting some brown sticking at the bottom of my pan. That is not burning. That is all flavor. And I'm going to get rid of that flavor by not getting rid of the flavor, by getting rid of that browning by deglazing in a little bit of white wine. And you can do about half a cup to a cup, as, uh, as much as you like, really, as much as uh, you can handle. And this will pick up all those little bits of flavor on the bottom. This is what's going to give you, in the end, that real depth of flavor. All right, so now that the alcohol has burned off from the wine and we're just left with the flavor, I'm going to do about a cup of crushed tomatoes in here and about two cups of water, a couple, three cups of water. That's perfect right there. Now, this now, we're going to bring this up to a boil, reduce heat, cover it partially and let it go for an hour. That's the key. This hour will help tenderize our octopus and make it so it's really enjoyable to eat along with infusing our sauce with its flavor. All right, so it's been about an hour or so. My octopus is pretty much done. During this time, oh, get a little pasta facial. I've actually prepared my pasta. I made a little bit of rigatoni. You don't need to sit there and watch me boil pasta. That's, uh, that's not necessary. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to incorporate my pasta in my sauce. So just take this and just throw it in there, just like that. Now here's the thing. This pasta is al dente. As a rule of thumb, Greeks don't do shit al dente. We just, everything is going to get the Jesus boiled out of it, including this. So what I'm going to do is let this go now. Let this simmer for another five, ten minutes until the sauce is actually reduced and the pasta actually gets done to the point of no return. All right, my pasta is sufficiently overdone. It's actually perfect, absolutely perfect. It may seem like a little on the runny side, but believe me, it's not. Once we plate this up, it's actually going to like tighten up even more. So here's my favorite part here. Time to try this out and see what's, uh, what we've done here. This is absolutely gorgeous. This is fantastic, man. Serve this with like a little mizithra or like a kefalotiri. You are like fantastic. Now, let me just take a real quick thing, peek at this. My octopus, my octopus is actually very, very tender. I'm good with this. Why do I always do this to myself? Mm. Oh, mm. oh. Melt in your mouth. This is so good. The octopus is like literally, it dissolves in your mouth. You don't even have to chew it. The pasta is perfectly overdone, like I said. I know it's a Greek thing, but this is absolutely fantastic. I hope you guys try this recipe because it's a simple one pot meal. Well, you boil the pasta, but it's a meal that's very, very simple to make. It's a great family meal. And you know what? You could even do this on a weeknight. It takes less than an hour and a half from start to finish. 
and you have something that tastes so wonderful. So that's it for this episode on my braised baby octopus with uh, pasta. You can use whatever pasta you like, by the way. You know, I use rigatone. You can use, you know, long, you can use short, whatever you like. That's one argument we'll never win is what's the best pasta. So I thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. For this recipe and so many others, please check me out online as well at kensgreektable.com. And until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other. And I will definitely see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.